Hey guys, welcome back to D&D with Filthy and Friends. Uh, it's been a little break for us from our main episode. We missed last week, recorded a one-off. Had a lot of fun with the one-off, uh, but we're back as our primary campaign. That's always nice to be back. I'll just do uh, introductions real quick. Dolphin Chemist from the uh, Dolphin Chemist Twitch channel. Uh, Joan Ribs from Joan Ribs Twitch and YouTube. Adam from Alt F4 Gaming. Myself, Filthy Robot. And Kevin with his wife's title for this week, the unexpected offspring of Jar Jar Binks and Gene Simmons. So, we're all here. We've all been appropriately introduced. And uh, a recap of last episode. So, uh, last episode, uh, we fought a some sort of possessing spirit. Oh, wow. Wow, and, Kevin. Wow. And uh, he gets some sort of proficiency bonus for that, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's a, some sort of check mark where it says husband. And he gets a little, like, yeah. plus two to it or something. <laughs> um, That's but... a, like, improvised weapon plus one as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Uh, Persuasion, for sure. Something. It's definitely and something. I can, I, can, I can get things out of my backpack and put them on my belt while I've got two things in my hand. Right? Yeah, there I'm, you go. I'm, I'm hoping, too, this becomes a recurring thing. So since you had no preferred titles, it um, sounds like Katie has a number that she's willing to uh, supply. And I think that works out very well. I... I fear from for every week now just... <laughs> keep a little uncertainty in your life shake it up yeah so it's your full-time job <laughs> uh all right so a uh, recap of last episode while adventuring in the dungeon we'd encountered a room full of treasure that thaddeus wouldn't let us touch and an evil spirit in there whose sole purpose was to distract thaddeus long enough so we could take the treasure but failed at that purpose um along the way possessed a couple people you know, took 40 years off Chakol's life, things like this. Um, but the party hit upon a brilliant plan of killing Chakol in order to get him back a few years of his life. Uh, with that in mind, <laughs> we're headed down. We're headed down now to uh, I can't remember. I think Waterdeep on the uh, on That's the right. coast um, with a Chakol who has just ritually committed suicide in the presence of a cleric to uh, prolong his lifespan by reducing the years he's lived i think what <clears throat> you you um I, you, you neglect the fact that the cleric actually murdered you with like 20 blows to the chest oh, right I, did. I would call it more of a surgery yeah it was uh, it was assisted suicide so yeah so it was attempted suicide the spirit within chakalth rejected that idea and fought for control and took control of his body to which this is why you have companions his companion stabbed him 20 times with a knife ritually and ended his life, and then put him in a 18. gentle repose, um, presumably after quite a lot of stitching and other <laughs> lots of makeup. And not, I don't know. This was, it seemed like a closed casket kind of thing to me, but apparently, apparently it's worked out well. The dolphin god works in mysterious ways. Oh Pretty yeah, it was a blast. You know, it occurs to me that I'm just glad to get some surgery experience just to be <laughs> yeah. in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Tough to get employed for your next party without at least having some on your resume. As a yeah, player. exactly, right? Got to get it on my CV. Yeah. It it occurs to me that Chakolth also lost like his um his top end spell slot last episode. So he he both lost a top end spell slot and got aged forty years in two different encounters. It went well. Life was been exciting. No. Yeah. And, and I think he did get his spell slot back after wrestling or something like that. No. How many spell no, slots do you have when you're dead? <laughs> Uh, There's got to be a spell you can cast in your dead. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there is. I'm waiting on you. <laughs> Trust me, I can make great use of that. Liches good. Yeah, that's right. So, anyways, I guess we're gonna pick up from there. I think, um, I think that was the, the bulk of the episode. Honestly, we spent a lot of time in that dwarven treasure room. Uh, it's not a treasure room. It's you're, a. Crypt. You're leaving out the part where you laid down on the ground and refused to move uh, when we said we were going back. <laughs> City, <laughs> which I do believe was a tactic usually reserved by four-year-olds, but it was uh, nice. I, I sometimes see small animals do this. Uh, yeah, that's true. I had a girlfriend who had two Jack Russells, and one time uh, on a long walk, one of the Jack Russells just like plopped down on like all four and refused to move. So I dragged yeah. it for a little bit till she yelled at me, and then she came. It. <laughs> it worked. It worked uh, in both situations apparently. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I think so, my point is that not just toddlers. Not just toddlers. Also, small yappy dogs. So, um, yeah, good. So we're on the boat. I think we're either in the port of Waterdeep or very close to it. There's a freshly killed but not decomposing body on board. 
And uh, I think we're going to take it from there, Adam. Yeah. And it's midnight. It is. Week three. The witching day hour. Day four. One minute past midnight. So it is night time. And we can hear the sound of gentle waves crashing against the side of the creaking Agatha. There is a timid <laughs> flicker of light from the last cabin on the bottom of the boat. As our view pans in, we see Barrettin at the wheel, guiding the ship in the night. Shifting below deck, we see Dolphidius and Thaddeus sleeping soundly. Lastly, we reach Tackle's room, where the blood-ridden floor glistens in the candlelight, slowly dimming. As the candle slowly fades and dies away, an aura of white, low, iridescent light slowly crawls out of Chakot's skin and begins wrapping around his form. We pan to the pie. Dolphidius and Thaddeus waking up. Baratim bringing the boat into water deep. Yeah. Can we pan in a little bit closer as he like pulls up to the dock and get that? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like midnight. Yeah. Does the boat come with like uh like one of those train horns? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd just use your voice. The fog horns, that's what they're called. <laughs> sure. If you want to have one of those. <laughs> yeah. Pro prob probably like there's there's the spell. What what is that? Uh phantasmal some yeah. You sh you could probably conjure that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would like to sound the fog horn just yeah. to make sure that we dock safely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the peaceful sleeping safely. city of Waterdeep. No, yeah. not sleeping. <clears throat> you see a bustle of people on the dock who are just like, you know, there's people at night time that's maybe chilling out and having a conversation, all startle at this loud noise. Sort of turns you look at the boat, breathe a sort of sigh of relief, and, and sort of carry on and go about their business. <laughs> Do I dock successfully? Yeah, you just put, you know, you've been here a couple of times already. Sort of Any know chance we can make a roll just in case? Sure. Uh, what did we use? Do we, we have a. <laughs> you, roll, you, you dock successfully. Ooh, yeah, 10 is fine. Sure about it. 10 gets you in. Um, okay. All right, and I know that Chakulf is dead, and the rest of the party was asleep before the foghorn. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and to be fair, okay. this uh, is the foghorn noise is the same noise we use to wake Thaddeus up in regular camping too, right? <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> so, so uh, no, wait, the fog whether Chakulf is actually yeah. dead, right? Sorry. So the foghorn the foghorn goes up. I wake up immediately. I kind of like jump out of my bed. Uh, the first thing I do is look over a check off to see if he has like his, if he's woken up or not. I, I'm like I got a kid on Christmas morning, um, and I see that he's still dead, and that makes me so happy uh, because that means I did my job really good. Um, then I run over to him and I grab kind of like the top part of his arm with my uh, left hand and then the bottom part of his arm um, with my right hand and I start just kind of tugging a little bit kind of like at the skin and I go he's dead and he's not even decomposing and uh, I just make sure the rest of the, the party knows okay. so, as you you approach, still there? so the, the, only, the only difference with what you said to what, what actually happens is as you approach and you, you reach down <laughs> to grab his Adam, arms Adam please finish that sentence with, is, with there's um, no similarities <laughs> Yes. <laughs> his his body is like cocooned in this strange white aura and as you like go to like grab part of him it's like there's a barrier in the way and oh. um it, 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 but you feel like you can push through it so like you put your hand through a little more and you can feel like his body's very cold to the touch um and this seems to just sort of be like kind of like wrapped on or sometimes it's on his skin or in his skin it's sort of flowing in and out but it's like you can see that it's it's on his arms and it's slowly going up um, around like to the top of his body, into the bottom of his body. It seems to be expanding like from the chest outwards. So Would some I sort of like infected from... insect infection, like those worms that were in the trees with all the <laughs> silk. <laughs> sure. Uh, Would I know if this is from, let's say, gentle repose or from something else? Uh, you can make an arcana roll. Okay. I can do that. You know, I would. Uh, do I know at least if it's from Gentle Repose based on my knowledgeability? Cast... I'll go ahead and gather. You know that this is definitely not a side effect of that, correct? Yeah. It has yeah. nothing to do with Gentle Repose. Okay. Um, cool. you, you definitely, you've never seen anything like this before and you don't really know what's okay. going on. Cool. I, I get out of there because, like, you're the one responsible for killing him. Um, you know, I'm proud of that, though. That's, that's, yeah. I don't, it doesn't cross my mind. We should mind. probably get out of here before the cops arrive, right? Thaddeus? <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
on. You think I'm <laughs> Wait, we don't have a Does Moradin sometimes like look away? Like Moradin's like not looking, he looks back, and if you're near the corpse, <laughs> he assumes you did it, otherwise you're good. <laughs> yeah, we really should have had him leave a note being like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Adam, we haven't done this before, but off the edge of the boat into the water. Presumably, a large port city may have a dock inspector of some sort. Like they're gonna, you know, you're gonna come in with something to sell here, and they're they're gonna want to take their percentage of that, as you know, like large cities are prone to do. So, uh, so you're saying you're likely to lose a foot in this transaction? So the I standard just... thing, the standard thing is, as you get off the boat, someone will um, be there to sort of ask you, you know, who you are and what you're doing. Do anything um, to declare. I, I, I presume, well, yeah, you guys would normally just say, you know, we're an adventuring group and we're here to do X, Y, or Z. And that's so regular and normal. If So unless it's something out of the ordinary, like for you guys, it could be anything from we're our, our friend needs here. healing or... Yeah, we're specifically here to find someone who can cast Greater Restoration as quickly as possible. Exactly. Just time so do we, yep. do we need to get a so story straight as a group? Like if anybody asks how... It's too late. I'm already talking to the inspector. <laughs> okay. Got it. So I, I'll have no idea what story you're telling him. You may yeah, just be telling you should each, that I You should each him individually come up with a story to stick to. Okay. So are you asking him for directions, Steve? Or like... Yeah, we had our barbarian kill him. <laughs> and now I need to get him back. He was quite useful. Hey. I, and you I need directions, directions, sir? Yes. Oh, he's right. fine with this? <laughs> oh, I didn't realize it was this type of city. He's just I mean, there for you. Know, the time you had your, you, and, and like as he's sort of thinking and to himself, he, he had your friend kill your other friend. Oh, it was important. I had to protect him from a spell. Ah. <laughs> Wouldn't <laughs> much about no this. No one ever. Um, I hear they're very complicated. You can see this very strange, nervous state. Oh, yeah, a bit. I'd you say that like, I, um, I can handle them though. They're not too confusing for me. Maybe like, take other a... people. Other people might find them complicated. You see him like take a step back as he like looks at your weapons as well, and they're like you know glowing and. Oh, you like my weapons? They're very uh, fancy, this aren't one they? Airbane. I actually killed a member of my party with this as well. <laughs> so directions, he says, trying to swiftly change his topic. Who did you kill? Um, and airbane? he uh, he it's gives you um, perfect awesome. directions to a temple nearby that's probably um, ten. 20 minutes walk. All right. So, uh, I guess so we'll want to just carry a, through the is city. Is there a wheelbarrow? If um, it were my campaign, there would be. I yeah. would rather you cover it up so that you don't offend the locals. Would How you about a cart? Like, do you like something to carry him in? How about just like minor illusion, a smile on his face? Yeah, weekend of Bernie's. I got some prestidigitation. I can give him some neon, like, smiley face, you know. Um, can we hire a, uh, that thing that you write? Carriage, maybe. What does Barisim say? Are you talking to the guy with me, Thaddeus? I don't, I don't think so. I, think I don't think that was Thaddeus. Me. I, was I yeah. thought he was still aboard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're sort of a do-it-ourselves group. Uh, we'll just... <laughs> Throw him over the shoulder, you know. Maybe wrap him in a bed sheet. Yes, if you please just cover him up, that that that, that should be fine. Probably the yeah, bed sheet that he was sitting on when he was stabbed to death. That's what I was thinking. The, you know, it's the red and white one. Yeah, that's almost certain to be the one he picks. Yeah, it's a classical color archetype. <laughs> As you say that, you just see him sort of slowly walk off. Thank you. Glad to help, sir. Good thing they have port inspectors here. I mean, Christ. I mean. Thankfully, he yeah, stopped any sort of sketchy individuals coming through. Yeah, yeah, nothing slips by this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we have a corpse on board that we just freshly murdered. All right, cover it up. We're gonna cover it with a bloody sheet. Sounds good. Be on your way. Well, he, he didn't say. He didn't say bloody sheet. Oh, he doesn't know it's bloody. <laughs> well, let's let's. Did he give me directions? Yeah, he did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's, let's. You're basically gonna go head on out. Um, from this ward to this ward. I can't see your things. Oh. From this ward to this ward. I can't see your okay. things. Oh. Yeah, strange. I saw that. You, you yeah, oh. saw that. Oh, maybe it wasn't zoomed out far enough. Okay. 
All right. Uh, I'm going to bring the rat to help explain to the priest uh, what we need done. <laughs> okay. The rat's going to tell him? Well, just to be like, hey, this is another thing. Like, we gentle repose, just like that. And I kind of want to show off how good I am at gentle reposing stuff. Yeah. Excellent. You can I resurrect the rat uh, and see if the undead exactly. rat fights any better for the rat versus exactly. hair. It's only like a 5,000 gold spell, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. not do it twice. Okay. So, Bertin goes back onto the ship. And this is uh, midnight still, right? So you're walking yeah, through the streets of Waterdeep with a body at midnight covered in a bloody sheet. Are there Is that how, is that how it's forces? going down? Is that, is that what's going on? I love that you place ownership of this event on us when you... Yeah, are I'm dead. Are the... Clearly can't be on me. Okay, but I think that our situation is better than yours. Yes. It's just... Yeah. yeah, no, I, I like to, I just like to, um, from time to time, take a moment, step back out of character, really, and the, from, from a meta right? perception, kind of just put this together for the audience in case they were trouble, trouble missing, if they missed any of the pieces of this, because it's such, to me, a glorious image of success. Yeah. So one thing I want to, like, as we're going through to the temple, I'm going to be really just kind of fascinated by the big city and just kind of everything going on, and I'm constantly just going to get distracted and stop pushing the wheelbarrow towards the uh, temple and at some times completely forget that we're actually here to resurrect somebody. Okay. So, um, let's see. Make a wisdom roll for me. Oh, I can do that. I got that. As long as it's not intelligence. Yeah, clearly. Oh, fuck. So, um... <laughs> This takes the party like an extra two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so because it was supposed to it was supposed to be a twenty minute journey from the docks to the south ward. <laughs> and um like Dorphidius just keeps going like, Hey guys, come and look at this over here or like, Hey, look at this or like he just like puts the wheelbarrow down for one minute and like walks off in a direction and you guys have to like go chase him down. Um and he's like, Yo, but look, there's like a pond and I can see dolphins in it, and oh, it's so beautiful, and um, you know, this goes on. And, um, and Thaddeus, this entire time, he put on his heavy plate for this formal occasion, and he's got to pee this entire time. So, like, he's just like, come on, we gotta get going, and then, like, no, no fucking dice. Don't do make it. me turn this wheelbarrow around. <laughs> so, Trekholz now has one hour remaining. What? Just as you arrive in the, um, at the, at the I thought I started with 12 days. 10 days. Does it? Chance of repose, it, 10 days. Is it days now? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, well, this is time. one hour remaining until the 24 hours on the original spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, a real time crunch, so we're fine, okay. luckily. Yeah. Well, not really, but... Um... Yeah. <laughs> so you guys arrive? At, um, like a... Is it open at 2 a.m.? 3. It's 3 a.m., right? Hour and a half or whatever? Probably so, whatever time. like... What's the image? It's Dolphidius at the front with the wheelbarrow, and do you just have the rat in your, one of your hands as well, Dolph Gray? Or how is yes. that going? Just, yeah, I got. I, 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 it's between. I mean, it's dead, so usually most of the time I'll just keep it in one of my pockets, and sometimes <laughs> take it out to look at it and make sure it's still dead. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, he is leading the party, and he obviously doesn't fit in in the big city. He's like using his tracking techniques and things to try to hunt down the temple. Sure. Okay. So you guys get to the uh, temple of Tia. I'm weapon out and I'm glowering at well. anyone I see. Okay. You're doing what? At anyone you see? I'm, I'm glowering at them. If anyone, if anyone like looks out a window at us or anything, I glower at them and yeah. That's phase one is glower, heart. phase two to heart of darkness. It's it's, it's just yeah. like yeah. Instant at level heart seven, of he gets like long yeah. distance heart of darkness. He can <laughs> snipe heart of darkness. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you guys arrive at the Temple of Tear. Um, you see a couple of acolytes sort of moving around outside at the front. I'm going uh, to um, storm pat, the gate. I'm going to pat Chakolthan on, on the on the shoulder and say, "I've accompanied you this far, companion, but I'm not going into this den of iniquity and sin." And I will stand outstairs on outside on the steps, glowering at people that try to get in. <laughs> it's a good guy to have around when you're in need. 
So I'm gonna follow I'm that. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely roll... interested in talking to the the priests and the clerics. Can so you roll be... intimidation for me, Kevin? Just to sort of see what people get from you as they approach. Um, I expected no one to approach. Uh, sure. I'd like I'll... to assist this role if you want advantage, Kevin. What are you gonna do to assist Tavius? Is glowering. He's like a little dwarf. Probably stand behind him and look big. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the exact opposite. I'm going to interpret that glowering is meant to be about looking small, and so I'm gonna try to make myself look very small and angry. Okay, <laughs> like crouch down kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. So you can have, you can have advantage, Kevin, as well. you see Baratim beside you, just like menacingly small. Yeah. So there's <laughs> um <laughs> there's a group. There was a couple kind of approaching. And they sort of they, they saw um, Thaddeus sort of glaring at them, which is a bit strange. And then and then sort of Baratim comes over and crouches down beside them, and they just sort of re- slow down, look at one another, and exchange a few words, and then turn around and swiftly walk the other way. And Dolphin, you approach the the priest. What do you what do you say? I say good evening, priest. And I say we have need of your services. Is it too late this hour? We're in dire need. So you see, uh, he he turns around, and um, there is like a a crest of like lightning, sort of that borders his collar, um, and he sort of says, "Welcome, religious friend, to the God of Justice's house. May this temple bear you well. How may we be of service?" You brought me to we the God of at, Justice. We are few at hand, but we should be able to help. Seems like a bad choice. We yeah. should have asked for the, the the god of chaos or or like yeah. um, or bad choices or something. Yeah, I feel like justice is not going to be. This is not going to help that much. We no. should probably ask if there's not. Is, is there, there a less the... just god yeah. you could bring us is to? There a, is there a slightly worse it, temple thing. nearby? Is there <laughs> yeah. a lower rate temple? We're looking for more of a discount. Uh, Tem- no, so iniquity and. Um... <laughs> You hear Tim yell from outside, I dated a girl named Justice once. <laughs> she was great. And I, I, so I, I turn back to him. I say, my friend here is, is, is dead. Uh, and I gesture, do we have the wheelbarrow nearby enough? I don't know, did you, wheel, like, did you like wheel it up to him? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, we have the wheelbarrow right there. I'm hoping it's like basically so just... What? Did the camera the pans out and the wheelbarrow is just right there. No, no, no. Did Someone like... forgot to watch it and it's slowly rolling down a hill a little bit away from the temple. <laughs> yeah, Kitty Sacks music is playing. <laughs> is it more like a grand reveal where Dolphin just goes, yeah, my friend's dead and like peels away the sheet? And As a just... rat falls out of his pocket. Chuckles. Is that the kind of how we see the reveal or is it? Yeah, no, and that'll work. I'll take Chuckles. Um... Uh, suggestion too, which is as I'm kind of leaning over to pour the sheet out, the the rat falls out at the same time on top Perfect. of his corpse. Dead, so, but yeah. very peaceful looking. So we now see like Chuckles' entire form, except for like from his neckline up, it's kind of got this strange aura on it that's like weaving and moving in and out of his skin. Um, it doesn't seem to like come like off of his body like towards anyone or anything like that, and it doesn't seem to like be following any regularity or pattern it's very chaotic and it's all over the place it seems to speed up and slow down in places um and yeah the rat kind of like hits it and for a moment just sort of bounces up and then sort of lays back down again um you see you should, you should point out you didn't do that piece that that isn't your fault you should also specify when you unveiled that which friend you meant he might be thinking the um rat. who's next to is it it's just you isn't it? dolphin you just roll me a perception sure You see um, the rat twitch slightly, um, and then your get your gaze sort of goes back up to the the priest, and for a, like for a half second, you see a very strange look of disgust <laughs> on his face, which kind of immediately is like framed away from like practice, and mm-hmm. he's like, "How long has your friend been dead? I have never seen this condition. What is on them? What happened?" Uh. Well, I thought you might be more help with uh, the, what appears to be uh, the what we'll call the whiteness. Uh, that has been since uh, we we performed a medical procedure on him uh, back on the boat, uh, extensive surgery. 
uh, somewhere between 17 to 18 stabbings. Uh, complicated work, no assistance. Over. You seem like hours. nodding sagely, <laughs> as if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I'm mostly, I'm, I, I pause for a moment and I actually, I'm just waiting for him to compliment my work and uh, pause. This is, it's very this is as bad as sending Thaddeus to do, to do like. Uh... You must have a unique doctoring style in your culture. So perhaps you would yeah. bestow us with your knowledge one day. I uh, I reach into my I reach into my bag and I uh, grab one of the rocks. But on this rock, I have some of my personal information written down on it. So I hand it over to him. What does so it he say? Asks, uh, it says um, Dolphidius, follower of the first uh, first class uh, cleric, uh, last rank barbarian, uh, freelancing consulting surgery uh, on the last row. Um, and this is all written very, very small ink on a rock that I had so you on my see, back. Like, so you pass it to him. Mm -hmm. like, he stares at it for a moment, and he, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a set of like very small wireframe goggles, like uh, glasses. Uh, puts mm -hmm. them on and like puts the rock right up to the like right up to the glass. <laughs> and he sort of then slowly pulls it away and goes, oh, "This is magnificent work," <laughs> and like, puts it away in his pocket. It's a, it's so, a talent of mine. Let's see about your friend. May we bring him inside? Yes, of course, of course. And I kind of, I go over to the other side of the wheelbarrow and I immediately like kind of like... to remove this rat? Uh, no. <laughs> and he sort of looks at you strangely again and goes, as you are, sir. And he takes the wheelbarrow and sort of goes inside. Okay, so I assume we're both kind of pushing the wheelbarrow together. Um, slowly pan over to... Thaddeus and Barrett him, <laughs> who is in a small menacing position behind the dwarf, or just beside the dwarf. Um, what are you guys going to do in the meantime? Are you just going to do that for the whole kind of scene inside? Um, I, I think so. I'm not, I'm not interested in going into this heathen den. What's around me? Me. <laughs> well, are there like bars by the Temple of Justice? <laughs> Uh, the okay, bar so of in, justice. You're in the south justice ward. Justice bars. Uh, which is, you kind of can, could tell as you were going through that this place is um, primarily, you can see for traders and lots of um, merchant areas. Uh, so there were a lot of market areas that you walked past, um, especially in the two hours that you guys spent exploring. Um, you did see a lot of this sort of architecture design for helping trading and selling and ex exchange of goods. Um, you definitely passed, um, like, there was, like, a small sort of common house that you could maybe go to. Uh, maybe not quite a pub, but somewhere that people might have a, have That's a drink. That's fine. I'll just, uh, I'll just busk right here. Okay. Right next to Thaddeus? Yeah, at 3 a.m. Which <laughs> instrument do you use? I'm going to use my tambourine. I'm so not keep mind, there's only two of yeah. you if it comes down to combat, so... 3 a.m. is tambourine time. There's no question about that. Yeah. Yeah. Want to make a performance roll? Are there noise ordinances in Waterdeep? Does he get disadvantage for Thaddeus being near him as he's trying to perform? Because that would really kill the joy, I think, for everyone walking by. Thaddeus is my muse. I think that's up too. Yeah. <laughs> it's um definitely not. It's a bit off key tonight. Like the no, the noise isn't quite as nice as it normally is, and it seems to be like I don't know resonating off some strange parts of the buildings around you, and it feels a bit dissonant, almost haunted. Um. Oh, that's so yeah. As, you know, as the you're... between noise and music is Tim, right? I mean... <laughs> as you're bringing the wheelbarrow in, uh, Gray, you, you hear this very faint sound coming from behind of the, the tambourine, but it's, again, it sounds a bit strange and off. Um, you get to the back of the temple, and there's like a, a large uh, statue of a, like a... It looks almost like a knight with a kind of sword straight down. And then um, he, he sort of directs you off to the left where there's a, a like a large room. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I'm actually, when I see all of this, uh, I try not to show up, but I'm actually a little bit scared, given that it's 3 a.m. and there's this giant knight statue that I've never seen before in the city that I've never been in, and there's this very, very unsettling tambourine music playing in the background. So, Well, at least you've got one of your friends with you as support. Yeah, exactly. So he I mean, takes you into this room. It's full of bookcases, and there's like a, like a plinth. Um, and he asks you to sort of help him lay the body 
on this sort of thing. Uh, in the room is um, another individual who sort of turns as you enter. Um, Brother Farah, what is this? And you see them sort of converse, um, and he explains, you know, what you've explained, that your friend is dead and has this strange condition. Um, how long has your friend been like this? Do you have a question, Thaddeus? Um, there, there's other relevant facts to this case that um, you might want to add. Uh, sure. Not, not to, not to meta too much, but go ahead, go ahead. just, just, just a little hint there. You might. There's other things you might want to add. Mm -hmm. What, what do you have? If in they mind? come to you in the moment, Dolphin, feel free to. He's saying, not that you have to. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like uh, the forty, the, like the forty years lost. Not really. Oh, no. yeah. Because you mentioned that. That, well, you know, that's that's the one the time is tick clicking. Sure. Down. So well, I'll go into some. Uh, I'll go. I'll, I'll begin telling the story from the beginning. I'll start telling them about the spooky haunted room uh, with the, the spooky graves. The treasure room. The treasure room. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it the spooky room to them. Uh, mm. And there's gonna be spooky ghosts, and one of my spooky ghosts made my uh, spooky friend uh, really spooky old. At <laughs> which point he. Uh, must have changed his personality, reversed an age, made him into a four-year-old uh, because he got down on the ground and wouldn't get up. Yeah, lost 40 um, years, but in a different way than you expected. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I explained that we brought him back onto the boat. Uh, we killed him. Uh, we cast gentle repose on him. We also took the time to find our other friend here, the rat, and uh, cast gentle repose on it. So uh, we make sure that we have two examples uh, of what's going on here. So as you're explaining the story to him, you see this um, this guy appears to obviously be like a higher priest within the order, as the other brother was sort of moved away to maybe look at a few books. And he's sort of one, he's wandering around the plinth sort of looking at Chakolt as, as, as you're describing the story to him. Um, I've never seen anything like this before. It's, it's definitely a very high, powerful magic, though. It looks to be uh, inspecting his body. It seems to be some form of maybe stasis or I don't know whether that's due to the spell you've cast or I don't know what could have made uh, uh, have, uh, have made it, it turn into this though hmm. I rub my chin and I say yes Stacy <laughs> you talk about raising him from the dead I mean we, we could attempt this spell but I would have no idea of the ramifications of this what this magical barrier would even do to it mm -hmm. and so I go does that mean a discount <laughs> No, not at all. That just means I don't know what would happen. This is a very, very big risk. Mm -hmm. I could I could perhaps... Hmm, we could maybe keep him here and do some research and... I, I, I don't know what else to offer, so... Mm. I think we take the risk now and cast Resurrection. Okay, so out of character, is this what everyone's okay doing? Is it like towards 5,000 gold, is it? I think? Um, or are we just going to allow Dolphin? tip. To... It's coming out of Chakolt's magical items. We'll, we'll sell the gloves for it. <laughs> I'd say to over my fair, dead body, but... The, this was the plan, Exactly. Right? Right exactly. <laughs> over sure. my dead body. No, off your dead body. You don't know okay. where they are. They're invisible. All right, um, so you guys do, like, do the exchange. Uh, go on, Kevin. I, I, was, I was just going to say, um, does he seem to be clear that the the... Restoration is potentially the pressing matter there, and why he's dead in the first place. And does uh, the barbarian seem to be clear on what the word ramification means? <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll explain <laughs> that the original goal, just to be clear, I'll explain that our original goal was hoping to restore uh, the age as well, just like to make sure they're not misunderstanding any of that. Okay, so um, he kind of nods and goes, okay, well, we can attempt both spells together. Um, this this is an easy process. Um, if your payment is enough, then we I can begin. That's you justice, him, huh? If your you payment's the enough, money? I'll begin. Hmm. Are we going to pay him as a group? Or is this, are we sticking to the plan? Do we have 5,000 gold right now? Yes. Yep, we're going to pay. Okay. Because let's say if this doesn't work, I don't want everybody saying, you know, Gray, why did you pay two five thousand dollars for a stall? It didn't work. Yeah, it's okay. You just sell the gloves. Yeah, good point. We got a, we got all sorts of loot on this corpse. We can sell. 
and and we've learned that looting nope. corpses is good. If I recall correctly, there's a glowing white barrier over every part of the body except the head. You're naked except yeah. for gloves, which are now incl enclosed in a glowing. We'll white have barrier. 163 gold left. <laughs> That's great. funny. That's great. I'm wearing Chekhov's boots, right? I'm wearing Chekhov's boots right now, by the way. <laughs> which aren't when, magical, when did that happen? and they're they're we pretty old boots. Gold. Gold comes They're just good. slightly nicer than mine. That's they right. smell different. I like Tim's that. Tim's busking right now, so we're going to be in the cash, no problem. <laughs> yeah, 5,000 and one gold incoming. 5,000, no problem. We're, we're going to be the... So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hand over the gold. Okay. So you see him... Um, he Do you ask like for a... any guarantees? Are you like, you know, services rendered for... You know... I'm pretty sure he just anti-guaranteed us the entire way through. He basically just told us nothing's going to work, but please give me your money. And you just thought uh, that... Okay, sure. So you see, um, he first of all goes over to, um, it's like a cabinet that's got like some small drawers in, and he pulls out one, and you see him pull out um, a diamond, uh, Delphidius, and he okay. puts it in um, onto this like um, piece of the plinth, and covers it up, and takes out like a, a small hammer and hits it, and hits it so precisely that you see it just turn into a powder, and he like scrapes it off onto this area and walks over to Chakolf. And begins to dust it across him. And as he's doing that, you see him chanting and waving his other hand across. And these red and blue um, forms of magical energy seem to course around the dust. And it gets um, sort of coalesces towards his head. And then like it's sucked in, in through his mouth and his nose. And there's a moment where he his body seems to sort of relax. And you can see that the aging that happens sort of melts away. And he sort of begins to get more youthful. You can see all of his sort of skin sort of returns to like that. Um, still dead but younger almost um, for a moment he seems to pause sort of look over and um, say this seems to have done its job I will attempt the next spell and he goes over back to the drawer and he, he reaches up to a higher drawer and pulls out a solid but much larger diamond are you um, keeping track of these drawers, um, Dolphin? Just in case I do wake up soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm mostly doing it for the purposes of uh, learning. Sure. My, um, my intentions are I pure. I might want you to share your knowledge once I yeah, wake up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he holds the, the diamond up, and there's like a... Behind um, the plinth is a large disc made out of like a strange metallic gold metal um, that's got like etched runes around the side of it. Um and he whispers and a magical set of sentences and a beam of light shines through the diamond uh, into his hands and it, there's like a coalescing of white energy and he slowly pushes it towards Chakoth's uh, head and you can see that he's like, like kind of struggling almost as if there's not enough space or did something put, preventing him to do that. Um, yeah, I've seen this. It's like when you get your fortune told and the woman like concentrates and then she like pretends to like be thrown around by mystic forces <laughs> and she asks for like 10 more dollars or something similar here. Um, the magic is kind of entering his body and coming in and out and there's a moment and then it sort of dissipates and ends. Um, the priest sort of steps back, not shocked, but quizzical and sort of turns to you and says, well, I've never seen that before. Um, Always I don't know what the doctor says I, that. I don't know yeah. what the results will be. The magic seems to go into his form and be resisted somehow. And this mm. strange whiteness, as you describe it, is still present. It seems to be even still moving, and you can see that it's got up a bit further up his neck. But it seems it's not moving at the same rate it was earlier. It seems to be slowing down as it's like approaching his kind of head area. Hmm. I'll go ahead and approach the body and kind of investigate. Okay. So I'll see if there's a... I don't know. I'll, I'll take a closer look at uh, Jack. I'll have to see if there's anything I can discern. Is there anything from like an Arcana? Could I like roll 20 in on Arcana and figure out what's Whatever going you on? Want. You can pick a thing that you... Yeah, I'll do Arcana. Like Arcana or Perception. Were or any of your uh, surgical no, decisions uh, above the torso, Dolphin? Ooh, there we go. Wow. So um, you can see that his body seems to be um, not breathing, but maybe moving in some 
some parts, but it's really hard to tell, like whether he's alive or even conscious, because as as well as your perception may be here, this barrier is still kind of in the way, and it's always fluctuating and changing. But occasionally, you get like glimpses where maybe it's chaotically moved apart, and you can see a bit of his his torso, and it maybe looks like some of the blood has maybe gone back into it. Maybe, but you, you, there's nothing definitive there to say you know he's alive or he's well. Um, you can't see that he's actually breathing or um, his, his body's, you know, in any sort of waking form. But there are things that hint at that maybe he's recovering, maybe. Okay. You, you've created the first, like, dolphin lich. This is Yeah, cool. there you go. I would like that. Uh, any change to the rat that was uh, chilling on top of his bunny? So, um, as... As the magic went into Chakol, um and then there was that sort of burst of energy, part of it sort of flowed down and went into the rat. So as you look at it now, it begins to sort of twitch and move and does this like a little circular run around the top of his chest as you look over to check on it. And with a 27, you can just make out the rat saying, brains, just <laughs> real low with that natural 20. I, uh, I quickly uh, reach out to grab it, um, assuming it's not very fast and it's recently resurrected. I'll say, yeah, I'll say with your perception, you're fast enough to notice that it's like moving and you can. Uh, and I ask, um, and I, I quickly ask the priest and I say, that's not extra, right? He looks at you just like, <laughs> and just shakes his head. <laughs> and I, okay, I say, I, I, I kind of nod my head as I very caringly kind of hold the rat and stroke the top of its head um realizing it's probably in a fragile state much more concerned with it than uh the whiteness or my dead friend there what would you like um, to do, so sir? at this point i'll i guess i'll say hmm well <laughs> could we is it could we leave him with you for observation for a bit of course this is a strange monumental discovery I'm, I'm already keen to tell some people of this and have their input. I've never seen anything like this. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your hospitality and your help. And then I remember that we just paid him 5,000 gold. Um, I need to tell my friends of this development. So I of want course. to seek out my, my companions. All right. We'll sell the corpse for medical study. Sure. I think 5,000 gold should do it, don't you? Are you guys out busking right now? Yeah, how much yeah, did I just made? skipped ahead like a couple of minutes. Yeah. So I guess our scene is we see Dolphin coming out to the haunting of the Tamarine and then begins to explain the story to which Bereton replies, the selling of the corpse. <laughs> mm. Can we get them to agree that if there's any consequences of this, that it's no longer our responsibility? If we hand over the goods and it kills the city, <laughs> they won't hold us responsible for the destruction of the city. Is that true? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I think it would be technically Chackle's fault, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, it's hard to know at this point who's responsible for this nonsense. There was the killer, there's the ghost, there's Chackle himself, who probably would destroy the city given the opportunity. I'm not sure who to hate the most right now. Well, it seems like we should probably... We did just sleep, but we need to probably blow 12 hours or so before we can revisit the temple, right? <laughs> No, can't you just, just walk back. You can just there. stand there and observe. Like, just stand there over the shoulder. The next. <laughs> well, it's three a.m. When did we sleep? Because we could just go find an inn. You guys slept on the boat, night. technically. Like you had a long rest. Because I think it was like yeah. a couple yeah, of days. Yeah, and saying. we have thirteen so. gold pieces now. Something like that. One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. All right, that's good. Sniven's yeah, no, meant to be. We got one hundred and fifty right now. You can yeah, try to find Sniven. Why don't you go buy a bar full of people? Um, around there, Tim, and yeah. uh... <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> that'll pretty well finish up to 150. I think Tim's Sniffen really would have. Confused. I think Stephen would have left at the point you guys, or somewhere around the time you were either sailing or arriving. God, I'm <laughs> back, fucking Stephen. But yeah, 
Let me can let me really? work that out. Carry on. Sorry. Let me I'll work that out. He has my cloak of protection. I thought we worked it out. We'd get there ahead of him. I thought we worked I out last time. Yeah, no, I think you're right actually. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess you could seek him out if you want. Yeah, it was a, it was a team building trust exercise. He thought he was on right, task well, I want for us. To, I want to look for Sniven, and it, in finding him, to find him, I would like to ply some rumors from taverns nearby by buying people drinks with the remaining 150 gold that we have. How much of the gold do you so want to spend? Yeah. Oh, only like 20. You're trying to get like the rumors of where oh, the road is. Oh, we've got 163. You sure you don't all want right. to go all that? You can make an, like, an investigation with advantage. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, four and a three. Pretty big rolls. You hear from a group of traders in one of the common rooms that uh, we described earlier that the um, a caravan arrived, um, sort of a day or so ago, um, into the trade ward that sort of matches. That, that, like, that, that there were a few people in there that kind of matched that description of Snow. An ugly goblin with a very heroic stance wielding 8,000 gold that he's just throwing around. There's a couple that meet that criteria. Interesting there chairman. Go there was goblins that were on a mission to trade. I, I guess see. is the way that you would explain it. We, we should find the other four that aren't him. <laughs> yeah, and rob them. Yeah. Right. They could be able to cast Inspiring Mental. Yeah. That'd be... That's a good spell. Good ability. All right. Maybe they're, maybe they're for hire. So, uh... I need a new party member. Is this a good, uh, good time to cut? Sure. Okay. Let's take our first break here, then. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you soon.